Hey, what's up YouTube, Sky Badger here, and we are back on day 10 of our 22 player data tournaments, Clash of Nations series, whatever I was calling it. So if we have a look at the index of nations, we can see that we are still in first place on 131 victory points, one sixth of the way there practically. So we're making good progress, and yeah, we still have a lot of the way to go, however, with Romania still being very hostile and Yugoslavia defending him. I mean, we can probably get 78 points there. Romania, 73. Yeah, we can get another 140 from them, and that will get us halfway. So with them under about, we'll be halfway there and we'll be well on our way to victory. However, it seems more likely we'll probably end up with a coalition victory, to be honest. So if we have a look at the largest economies, we can see we're in first place, which directly reflects the index of nations. However, from then on, uh, Egypt is in second, Spain third, Algeria fourth. Uh, now, the reason Algeria is in fourth, despite the fact he's actually the second biggest player in the game, I believe that's the Algerian flag, I could be wrong, yes it is, um, is because he's just recently captured large areas of land from Italy, and the morale has not had time to settle yet. So, it's going to put him on a back foot. In terms of where we're going to go from today, we're going to head up slightly, we're going to jump up in the VPs, because we were able to capture Warsaw yesterday. I don't believe that was counted in yesterday's VP counts. Uh, we were able to capture Warsaw, so that will throw us off a bit. We also managed to catch uh, Danzig, 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 I don't know, Danzig, sounds about right. Uh, we captured Danzig, if that's how you pronounce it. You guys love to tell me when I'm wrong, so I'll hear about that. Um, and that's just some more points I'm about. Now, I'm also pretty happy we control Danzig because it comes with an industrial complex. We haven't captured one of these in a long time, guys. You know what this means? I can start to produce ships in the Baltic Sea. So, uh, at the moment, all of our ships have to come down from this port all the way up here. And that is a really, really, really long course. Because, I mean, it's going to come all the way down around here, past Great, around Greater Finland, around Sweden, and then all the way down into here. So, you know, it's nice. To have that all sorted out. So in terms of where we're at at the moment, we just actually made the most of a very hostile situation. Um, Sweden was sending troops over to land over here, and I didn't want them, or else I'd have to send more troops over to here to defend the border, and he had troops along this border here. So I uh, sunk his troops, sent him a lovely message, warning him why, and you know, turn them around. And um, it worked out really well, and I've potentially lined up a new ally. So I killed his troops, and potentially worked out a new ally. So the intel we're seeing over here at the moment is actually pretty old. Uh, these troops have since been dispersed, and they just took out Poland's territory in the west. Now, I would have liked some of that territory, but being reasonable about it, it's going to take me all day to do it with an anti-tank gun and an anti-air unit. I'd be here for months. Well, not literally, but like you get the idea. It'll take me a long time. Uh, I need these troops up here to hold Danzig so it doesn't rebel. I don't want to lose that. Um, my other troops are actually pretty injured, and my only other notable formation in the area is moving in to bomb out a large group of Romanian troops, 12 exactly, that are uh, dug in down here. So, you know, with these troops out of action, I really only have two light tanks I can spare in the region, as well as these two units here. Uh, the light tanks are only in here to stop this province from rebelling. Once this province is clear for rebellion, I don't have to worry about it. These light tanks will head down to this group here, and the two units in here will be sent back to my core where they can rest and recover. Because, I mean, look at that. 0.4 hit points. That's not good. So, Romania is still putting up a good fight, and I have sent him plenty of opportunities and been really, really encouragemental with him to help repair the damage he's done to the Ukraine. Uh, but he doesn't want to. Um, by the looks of it anyway. So with him still charging and fighting viciously, we are getting ready to go in there and sort him out. So at the moment, one of our other large army groups in the region has just captured Crimea, and I'm just waiting for this to settle. Once it settles, these troops can get back up the front, and we can start bombing these troops out. I have a large group of artillery. I thought there were six. I must have lost a piece of five pieces of artillery in the region, moving in to help bomb out and recapture the last city that belongs to Ukraine. From here, I'm going to move forwards and start bombing out these fortifications, and then pushing forwards. Uh, now, at that point, once I start attacking this core, I'm not going to stop. At that point, it's too late for him. Um, I've given him plenty of opportunities to yeah, do the right thing, but he seems pretty certain 
not to. So that's where we're at down there. Now down here as well with Yugoslavia moving forwards and he's about to have a border with me on the... He's about to have a border with me down here. I've sent some troops down to reinforce my border. And as we can see, I have some lovely fortifications I nearly complete. I would like to spend more to upgrade these to level 2. But I need to open more industrial centers for the purpose of food production. So at this point, I was considering opening the industrial center in one of these provinces when I get the iron. But I think I might open it over here if this province doesn't rebel. This way from here, I can increase my food production while also producing ships. Ships are going to be really important in the region to patrol the area and make sure that I don't get attacked across the seas up into here. That way I can focus on defending two points, this choke point right here, instead of having to split my troops over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. And I mean, even then, we've got like all this close to uh, Ukraine to worry about. So, you know, a navy in the region is definitely a necessary um, and I cannot get away with not having one. So, you know, that's the plan right there. It'll take me some time to get that, though. Uh, we did have some reveal alls on Yugoslavia, and he is sending quite a lot of troops over, especially commandos. So we are going to have to, you know, make sure that these points are really well defended. And although I do have some good defenses at the moment, and then um, commandos might be uh, a little too much to deal with. Commandos are pretty, pretty strong. I don't really want to have to deal with those. So if we also have a look at what else Yugoslavia's got, he's got quite a few ships, and he also has a few units up in Romania's cause. Now he does have this group up here that took this Polish city. Now I am a little salty about that, I'll admit it, but I mean, it's not worth going to war over. We will, we will go to war over it very soon, I predict, because he's defending uh, Romania's border with troops, so I'm gonna have to go in there and take that back. So that's what's happening down there. So the rest of our troops and a large portion of them are up here on our border with Greater Finland. Now, while I've been fighting my war in the west against Poland and Romania, um, Greater Finland has unnecessarily been deploying troops along our border. And I will not stand for this at all. It's a risk that I'm not willing to take. So I'm deploying my troops along the border and I've sent him a lovely message making him aware that with his troops on the border, it's clear that he does not trust me to some extent. Now, it is possible that his troops are deployed in Leningrad to defend Leningrad from troops coming in through the Baltic Sea. I could understand that, but at the same time, I mean, this group there, is, it, that's not in a position to defend Leningrad from the ocean. Um, that's in a position to stop me or attack me. So, we're having a lovely chat about that, and he is either going to move all of his troops to the west and northern regions and disperse them along this area up here or we're going to go to war over it. So I mean I've given him the choice. Uh, he can decide what he wants to do if he wants to go to war over it or he wants to disperse his troops but I'm not standing for this at all. This is overly aggressive gameplay right here and uh, this is how you know you get back sat. Um, I'm not sure what his intentions were. Uh, they could be fine like I mean he could just be defending his border uh, but it's not a risk worth taking. Considering all my troops have been in the West the past few days, with three armoured cars and four armoured cars and a light tank, he would have been able to very easily raid through my core and take me out of the game. Luckily, though, he didn't. Um, but I'm not leaving that window open anymore, so I'm deploying my troops to force him out of this position. This is not something I usually do with my allies, um, it's usually a given. You shouldn't have troops along your border with your allies. If you have troops along your border with your allies, there's a trust issue right there that you need to resolve. Um, it's clear me and Greater Finland have a trust issue. He doesn't trust me. And because he doesn't trust me, I no longer can trust him. So we're already seeing a breakdown of trust and next communication will go. And then from there, it's war. So I've given him the opportunity to restore trust by moving his troops to the other side of the country and then if he can do that it's clear he can trust me and then my troops will head down to the front currently i've got one third of my troops deployed here and these could be much better used elsewhere if we have a look at the troops that are deploying to the region you can see we actually have some really competent numbers um, and some really strong formations 
well, I just missed that one out of unit, but there's roughly about 25 units there from what I remember counting. And that's roughly one third of our army. Made up of a fair bit of armor and a lot of infantry. It would be nice to have some artillery with this, but my artillery is too vital and has to stay at the front. Hopefully though, once we resolve this situation, I can get me troops back to the front lines, especially down here to Turkey. And yeah, we'll be all good to go and we'll be in a good position again. But just for the time being, this is not a risk worth taking. I'm not going to let myself lose this game because I put trust in a player that didn't trust me. So, you know, for future reference, guys, if you're ever playing with me and I, and I share my mats with you, don't put troops on your border with me. It doesn't end well. So, yeah, that's, that's that. So, I mean, I sent him a lovely long message about it. Um, probably very poorly worded, but um, yeah, send him a good message. We were did have some pretty good communication up until that point, so hopefully he'll respond and we can move on with that pretty quickly. So apart from that, oh shit, I didn't leave that too late, did I? Um, oh god, three minutes. Ugh. It's going to be a close one. Can you get there in three minutes? The, it would appear as if the interceptors are stopping it. Split the interceptors off. Tactical bombers attack. Yeah? Yeah, does that work? No, it, it doesn't want to do that. You can do it though, you haven't attacked yet, you can still attack. Well, I guess it's just up to this unit. Split, and then let's have the yeah, attack. Okay, 30 seconds, so I now need to split that into smaller groups. Somehow, uh, this better work, uh, we're going to be slightly annoyed. Those tactical bombers should have been able to attack without having to return to base. So, yeah, once this is out of the way, we can redeploy our Air Force elsewhere and get ready for the day change. Um, on that note too, while we wait for that to happen, we have deployed spies and we've deployed economic saboteurs in Romanian territory and Yugoslavian territory. So Yugoslavia is also defending its border now against Algeria and Spain who have uh, moved into the region so he's spread pretty thin and I doubt he'll be wanting to start any wars but we just need to see what he's up to considering he's also moving troops up here in the region um, we just need to play it safe. Sweet so we destroy that one Romanian troop and our air force is returning to base so let's just group all of that up and there should be some more interceptors in there somewhere but I guess that will show up so let's then send that all the way back around to Warsaw Oh, there we go. And I swear I missed. Oh, there we go. 9 and 9. All good to go. Back around to Warsaw, and then they'll be in range of here to support when my artillery gets away. Just starts bombing out the group that was there. I swear there was a group there. Anyway, so before we finish, research, commandos, still in progress, artillery level 2, in progress after that, anti tank gun, and anti air. Uh, nothing's going to pop up in the next two days, so I should be able to get that through, and if I have time, I'll get a destroyer upgrade, upgrade as well, while I'm there. So, in terms of what we're building, we are still spending a lot of resources on upgrading our food. As we can see, we're barely cutting even, to be honest. We're not making much at all, and this is just due to the fact we only have two core food provinces. So as you can see, they both have max level industrial centers, and they're both getting level two infrastructure at the moment if we come on down we can also see the number of our other provinces are also pretty you know, looking pretty good as well in terms of infrastructure um, these provinces here that I've recently captured just waiting for the morale to stay before I invest in them there's nothing worse than investing in a province for it to rebel you go back and they capture it and you lose all that progress and investment so once these kind of I guess uh, get to a stable level these will be getting infrastructure upgrades to increase my food production um, once I get these upgraded though, it's going to be really hard to get my food any higher and it's going to require an increased investment. So if we also have a look at what else we're building, we can see that we are also building in our iron producing provinces as well to increase our production of iron. Then along with goods, we can then increase our production of infrastructure and industrial complexes to keep up with demand. So. That's the plan going forward. You'll also notice I have very few troops under construction. I have one anti-air gun that is that belongs to this unit here, which needs some anti-air cover. I also have one infantry that's in Danzig, and that there 
would just be deployed to help keep that nice and stable. I also had, I believe it was, ooh, what was it? One submarine. Okay, yes, yeah, so the submarine's being produced up here to go out to the sea, and the anti-air gun's being produced down here to, to redeploy to that unit and protect it from the air. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.